What's up everybody, I'm Chris Cars, and I'm here at Warner Brothers Animation. Today we're going behind the scenes of the upcoming DC Nation block on Cartoon Network with Green Lantern, Young Justice, and the DC Shorts. We've got a lot to cover, so let's get going. We're here today to talk to you about this DC Nation block. How did that idea come about? We do a lot of action shows for Cartoon Network from the DC Universe. Justice League, Batman, Superman. But we've always wanted to explore some of the more obscure characters from the DC Universe that might not ever get their own show. But not only explore them in terms of story, but also explore them in terms of style. So we've gone out to a lot of different animation studios and a lot of different artists, and we've got a lot of different takes. So that's really where the idea from DC Nation came about, was if we can make a whole hour-long block based around the whole DC Universe, anchored by two of our action shows, Green Lantern and Young Justice. Man, what an awesome interview. But I'm gonna have to move really fast if I wanna get to this next one on time. <laughs> Bruce Tim, executive producer on Green Lantern Animated Series, has stopped by to talk to us about the show. What can we expect from this season? It's a, a pretty wild and extravagant space adventure with really unusual exotic settings and really interesting characters and a lot of humor, a lot of action, a lot of angst and drama as well. What makes this show really stand out as a DC property? It's our first show done entirely in CG, um, which is really, really exciting. The other aspect of the show that really makes it unique is this is our first show that's set entirely in outer space. We really embrace the entire science fictional aspect of Green Lantern. That's the one thing that really makes him unique, even in the, the DC Universe pantheon. Does that leave you a little bit room to bring in other DC superheroes? That is part of the plan. I can guarantee that at least two other famous DC characters will show up, but they're probably not the ones you're thinking of. So um, I'm gonna leave that as a surprise. Now we're in the office of Jim Krieg, writer and producer on Green Lantern, the animated series. How do you approach a show like this when it comes to the writing? Essentially, at the beginning, you make a list of things you want to hit, and Green Lantern has such a rich 80-year history that there are a lot of things that the fans want to see and that I want to see, too. The challenge is really to take all those things from the Jeff Johns comic book run or nods to the Neil Adams stuff or the Silver Age stuff and lay them all out there and find a way to checkerboard them so it all makes sense, and it's, it's very space-centric. So we need to show a lot of new stuff as well. I'm here with Giancarlo Volpe, producer on Green Lantern, the animated series. Why'd you guys decide to go with CG? Here's three great things about CG. Um, you get a lot more freedom with the camera, which tends to give the show more of a cinematic feel. It's not, you know, and I'm not at all knocking traditional animation, but it doesn't feel like reading a comic strip. It's a little bit more, you know, like you're in a 3D space and the camera can do all sorts of exciting things. Also, the lighting can get a lot more dynamic in CG. It just makes it feel more like a movie. Another thing that I really love about CG is that you can get a lot of subtle nuances in acting. Like, this is, a, this is a great example. If you have a character say, oh, I'm afraid we'll have to do that, like a slow turn, you know, like, like a menacing villainous thing. You can't really do that on a TV budget because they'll probably, you know, the, the in-betweens will do this and the character will, you know, the head will wobble around. But, but we can do like these subtle things like that, that, that I love. There's lots of like really good stuff about CG that I think will, you know, make this show stand out. I'm hanging here with Brandon Vietti, art director and producer for Young Justice. Brandon, why do you think fans have really embraced this series like they have? There's something in it for everybody. There's a lot of fun superhero action, but there's a lot of really complicated mysteries and secrets and lies going on, and there's storytelling in there that's sophisticated enough for, for adults, but fun and accessible for kids as well. We're trying to tell more realistic stories. The artwork has to carry these stories. So it informs all of the decisions we make from our character designs, the, the costumes. We want to try and convey, just through looking at a character, how realistic this world is. And through our backgrounds as well, the way we paint the backgrounds, it all comes through visually. The great thing about our, our second season of Young Justice is we're going to be introducing a lot of new characters, some of which haven't been animated before, which is really exciting to, to bring to life you know, some of our favorite characters from the comics in a, in a whole new way. 
I've dropped in on Greg Weissman, who's the producer of Young Justice. We're getting into a new storyline at some point when you kick the show back off again. Can you talk about that a little bit? We're first going to finish off uh, season one. We've got eight more episodes of season one. These episodes really drive towards our big finale, uh, our big confrontation between our team of young heroes, our villainous group, The Light, and the Justice League. Season two picks up right where season one left off, which launches our big invasion story, which is a 20-episode novel dealing with uh, multiple characters, all the old favorites from season one, but also a few new characters. I'm very excited about the DC Nation block. I mean, particularly for our show, because we are a show that really goes across the whole DC universe. So the best place for us to be is DC Nation, where the audience can come either because they already love DC or because they're curious about it or they need to be introduced to it. Given how our show is such a big DC Universe show, I just can't think of a better place for it to sit than, than as part of that DC Nation block. Saturday morning cartoons are back in a big way with DC Nation. Make sure you check out all the action on Saturday, March 3rd at 10 a.m.